All right, I think we're uh, at the time now. Thanks for everybody coming on a Friday afternoon at the end of a conference. Uh, really appreciate it, and I know we're all tired and we've seen a lot of stuff, but uh, this should be a fun talk. Um, so this is the ContainerD deep dive. I'm Stephen Day. Uh, I work on as a maintainer of ContainerD, among other things. Um, today, uh, so, so actually, first of all, I want to pull the room and see how many people went to the intro talk. Okay, so uh, that, that's, that's great. Um, so these are the same slides as the intro talk, but I'm going to do an actual deep dive and do some demos. And, and so I'll, I'll, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buzz through things. Uh, if it's confusing, uh, we'll also have a little time for questions at the end. So uh, we should, hopefully we'll have time for everything. Um, so a brief history of ContainerD. Um, it, there's a timeline going up to about March 2017 uh, when the ContainerD project became a CNCF project. Ever since then, we've been working towards uh, we had been working towards 1.0, which was released in December of this year. And the goal was to actually spin out a lot of uh, Docker's internals into a complete project, so that Docker could use it, and uh, other other uh, things that need container runtimes could use it, such as like Kubernetes and um, and, and builders and all sorts of stuff. Um, if you want to get inf any information about this project, uh, you can go to the GitHub uh, project. It's ContainerD slash ContainerD. Um, watch out. You can end up, if you're Googling, make sure you go to the ContainerD slash ContainerD one to, to file bugs and whatnot. Um, so uh, let me, so, so the, the technical goals of this project uh, were to ensure that we had a really clean uh, gRPC-based API and client library. We wanted everything to be full OCI support, so both image spec and runtime spec um, and the distribution spec. Um, and uh, we wanted to focus on stability and performance with a really tight core of container functionality. Uh, we also wanted things to be very decoupled, uh, decoupled so that uh, the image, the file system, and the runtime uh, could be plugged and reused, and uh, you could kind of use it in, in an a la carte fashion. So we, you want to be able to use only as what is, what's required, and I'll explain a little bit about that later. Um, it also has like runtime agility so that uh, we, we actually pass through configurations in ContainerD. So like ContainerD doesn't really know anything about Run C. All it does is get, call a binary and hand it a configuration, and that's all it knows. And so uh, what this means is you can drop in like Run C or C Run or Railcar or Kata Containers or uh, even GVisor, that, which was announced something like 48 hours ago. So um, that all works because we've, we've passed everything through. Um, so some of the use cases for ContainerD are ContainerD, uh, or sorry, Container API implementations. So this would be like Docker, Mobi, Kubernetes CRI, Alibaba Pouch, uh, and uh, SwarmKit. Uh, and then also for building images, so BuildKit's a good example of that. So BuildKit uses ContainerD to uh, implement kind of uh, the, container uh, the container file systems and runtimes to, to efficiently build images. And then also like IBM Cloud is using ContainerD as well. Uh, it's also used within Linux Kit to build the, uh, the system services inside of the container. Uh, so you can run uh, like... Uh, so basically, instead of having like an like an init, you can run everything as a container, and uh, and and that that's how it's built. If you're curious about that, check out Linux Kit. So a little bit about the architecture. The, uh, the, the main interaction goes to the gRPC API, and then we have a Prometheus metrics API, which, we, which users interact with. And then in the middle, we have uh, all of these, these services, and they, Im and, and they implement different parts of uh, what makes up containers. So uh, on, the, on the left here, we have the storage engine, which consists of a content store, which holds uh, things like layers and manifests and images. And then the snapshot store, which, or the snapshotter, which does the uh, like layered file system support, and then there's a, a diff service, which can, lets you uh, diff arbitrary snapshots so that you can actually build images from uh, however you want. Um, and then in the middle, we have the metadata store, which and this pins everything. So uh, the, the objects that you're probably familiar with from Docker or other container solutions, uh, this, is, this is where that is. And they kind of reach out across the system and define which. So, so an image will say, oh, I use this snapshot and this content. And then containers can be created from images, and they'll also reference the likes the snapshots that are that are doing dealing with the actual running uh, uh, the actual containers that you run. 
um, then the 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 tasks uh, service is actually what runs containers. So so uh, we split this out from uh, what was in uh, Docker into so you have like a metadata thing that says here's my container, here's all the resources that use it, and then here's the runtime aspects of it. And so it means that you don't have to keep writing state into your container and removes a lot of locks. And so it uh, it's capable of much higher performance when. Um, uh, when running containers. Um, then all this sits on top of an operating system in runtime. We don't really, have, we, we, we try not to abstract any of this um, so that you can uh, do whatever you want. <laughs> uh, so uh, a, li a little bit more kind of stepping back, this is, this is how Containerd would integrate into a system like Mobi or uh, CRI Containerd is actually merged with uh, Containerd now and I'll get into that later. And so uh, your API client is what's called like a fat client um, and it contains a lot of functionality and this allows you to modify it and change it for, for different applications. Um, so then it interacts with the Containerd API and then also directly with the operating system uh, like storage, file systems networking, and then the Container D, container D will actually uh, control the run times. So uh, if you want to, uh, so, so I'm going to talk, I'm going to show some demos and, and show a little code um, from the Getting Started Guide, but here's the link for the Getting Started Guide. Uh, I, I highly suggest you go through it. It'll show you how the API works. You can run your own containers, build your own little tiny container driver, and um, then you should be able to modify it and maybe use it for something interesting. Then I also suggest taking a peek at the Go doc. So, uh, so just to show how these services work together. Um, so the goal when you pull an image, you're looking to get a container root file system. Now, uh, what uh, in in so what, what you do is you have this like this set of layers, right? And you need to turn them into something. And uh, and this is what the services do for you. So uh, when you're pulling, you actually so on the bottom here we have each service that interacts with with the with the pull functionality. And so we actually start we we fetch from the remotes, and then we register all the content in there, and that's that gets securely hashed, and then uh, that is then. Uh, red, then it, that registers a pointer inside of the image metadata store, uh, which, which references it by it's it's what's called a digest, or it's it's actually it's like a SHA-256 hash. Um, and then the unpack unpack phase will pull all the content out of the content store, and then uh, we'll actually uh, unpack it into a snapshot. And and when it when it does the snapshots, it'll actually like unpack a layer and then commit it back in, and then it'll start a new transaction, then unpack a layer, and then commit it back in, and so on and so forth. And then eventually at the other end, you get what are called mounts. And those are actually taken in by the runtime. Um, so, uh, so, so snapshotters are how you build these container root file systems. Uh, I'm not going to go too much into this, but the, the general uh, the, the general storage architecture is you have this metadata store which references everything. So this is images and containers, and then they're referenced across the content store and the snapshotter. And then what you can do from this is you can get a config, which is like an OCI config, and then a root FS for the mounts. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to skip this part of the demo, um, and actually, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to skip ahead because I have a really cool demo that I want to show, and I and I'll come back to these slides. Um, and uh, just 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 it, it's more it's more this is a deep dive talk, and so uh, I want to get that. So 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 sitting here, I, I have a uh, completely fresh version of Container D, and. Um, so believe I just rm rf it, and uh, there's nothing in it. You can see, uh, so so container D is namespace, so I can list all of the namespaces out. There's nothing in here. You can see that um, this is just a completely uh, untouched container D. So we're going to start out, and we can just do normal things with container D. So we can like pull an image. Um, hopefully, I have a pull command here. Um, that we, can, we can just do Alpine latest, um, and so this just works. Very, very familiar interface, uh, and then now we have an Alpine image, and we can just we can list that like anything. And this is just this is boring stuff. This is how we want it to be really boring. We can run that, so I can I can say, um, you know, just CTR run latest. We can give it like that, and then uh, give it a, you know, well this is a demo. This is not a test. Uh, you know, and then we can you know, show and uh, that that's a bug. That's also a bug. Um, <laughs> so anyway, so so we're running containers here. This is very serious stuff, right? We're running containers, um, <laughs> and, and, and this is and so we we can we can we can actually see here uh, the uh, here. If I can get another tab, there we go. Uh, 
<laughs> they're, they're 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 typo mistakes. Um, so so what so what we can see here is is from so I can do containers ls and we can see uh, you know we can see my uh, oh I cc containers there we go so we can see the containers that I created right and these are just metadata objects so I can do container info demo uh, two and I can see like oh here's the snapshot key we're using overlay this is the created at and updated time. Um, and here is, uh, and I'll show you a second, we can see the run C spec. So this is, this whole blob here is the run C spec, and I'll show you how to unpack that in a second. And then we can also see like, oh, look at this, it's using uh, 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 this image, and it's using this runtime, uh, and you can kind of dive down. Um, it gets, so we can, we, we can actually pipe this to JQ. It's a really cool little tool here. Um, and uh, then pipe this through here, and then we can, Unpack the, the. This is all base sixty four encoded um, for fun, uh, and then we can see here. And what we have here is just a good old like this is the run C spec right here. And so container D is not actually abstracting this; it goes right through. You can define anything that run C can do, or, and anything anything that's capable with run C, you can do right in container D. And I'll show a little bit more about that. Now, th so uh, we're. we're one one thing I'll, oh, I will show you the snapshots before we get into the cooler part of the demo. Um, so there's so, so the snapshots are like a file system representation. So it's it's a transactional model where you can like make some changes to the file system, uh, and then you can commit them, and then you can make changes on top of that. And, and it works just like Docker. Have you ever played with like so when you build when you have a Docker file, it has like run, and then it'll have like. It'll say, oh, make this ENV and then do that. And each one of those lines is a layer. Uh, you, this one uh, in container D, you can just have, uh, you, you have a, a transaction. You can do a whole bunch of operations and then commit that whole thing. And they're what's called snapshots. So what we can see here is that I have demo one. And uh, it's a, uh, an active snapshot. Um, and its parent is this CD70 blah, 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 blah. That right there is the Alpine image. And then we can see our demo two has the same thing. It's probably easier to see this in a tree command. So we can see both of these two containers descend from the exact same file system. Cool, right? Yeah. All right. <laughs> it should be a little bit boring, or like uh, if it's a little confusing, that's OK. We, you can ask me questions later and, and figure that out. Um, but the real thing I, I wanted to have, so let's, let's quit out of this container, and I want to show you, I have, um, I have so, so re we recently released container D 1.1, and um, container D 1.1 has uh, built-in CRI support, so it works directly with Kubernetes. Um, and I, I want to show uh, both this, this working, but I also wanted to show you uh, how you can do some of the, the, things, that I, the things that I just showed you with, with pulling out the run C spec. You can do that all the way from top to bottom with Kubernetes and see actually the pod manifest working at the container D level. This is, um, but uh, first of all, we have to get there. So actually, I'm running on top of Docker right now. So, and I'm going to convert from using, from running uh, my local CRI on top of Docker to container D. So, just to show you, I have some pods. Uh, right here, you can see I've uh, I have an Nginx deployment. I have like Calico running, and uh, you know all of the all of the good stuff uh, that you would have running inside of a Kubernetes cluster. And just to show you, this is this is not fake. There's no recordings. If I mess this up, it's going to be very embarrassing. Uh, but hopefully, it works. So uh, curl it again. Nginx, welcome to Nginx. This is this is great stuff. So uh, so what we're going to do is is I'm going to go in. And uh, so there's a, a line inside of the, the, cube, uh, the kubelet service cube ADM file. And it actually configures the, uh, the, uh, the runtime. So right now I have it is there's no arguments. And then what we can see here, does it need to be bigger? Or are we, is this, can we all see that? Probably a little bit bigger. Uh, so we can see dash dash container runtime remote. And then we can see there's a request timeout. And then we can see container runtime endpoint. And this is pointing at the container D socket. So we're going to comment out that line. We're going to comment this line back in. And then we're going to do a daemon reload on uh, system D. And then uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take all these Docker containers. Uh, and we're going to start killing them because, um, yeah, that's. What we're going to do, we're going to say, um, so we'll go xargs docker stop. And so this is, gonna, this is completely killing my Kubernetes cluster. If I started curling right now, 
Um, this is probably going to stop. This is not going to work anymore, right? Because we're shutting. So we so we basically shut down the whole Kubernetes cluster. If we do get pods, it should probably. Eh, it's probably not. It's it's actually started up up on container D already. Well, no, no, no. Oops. Actually, you know what we need to do? We need to stop uh, the kubelet because the kubelet is restarting everything. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so here we go. Let's stop everything again. Um, don't do this. This is not the right way to convert to it. I just wanted to do this in a demo because it's fun. Um, got plenty of time. All right. So then if we start getting pods, we should see things falling apart. Uh, Container D is not doing anything yet. Um, and we should see that kubelet service is stopped. And then um, let's do one more Docker PS and make sure. So, so we're not running anything. So we should be able to do, we should be able to restart the kubelet service now with that new configuration. And if we look at the kubelet service, you know, logs are coming by, gits are working. We can start looking at the, uh, oh. Yep. So that, so that, so right now so right now the, the the API server isn't available yet because it's trying to start up. Um, we can see here when we so this is this is this is another tool called CryCuddle, um, and it lets you directly interact with the C, with the CRI. And I'm going to point this at Container D's socket now, and so we should start seeing these pods come up in Container D. Oh, there they are. And so we can see that like the controller manager and the scheduler and the API server and etcd have all started to come up. And maybe if we are lucky. Oh no! Yeah, that is not working. Uh, and so we can look at you know we can look at journal control. Da -da. Still not working. What are we missing? Ooh, that's not good. Let's really get rid of them. Okay. So there we go. OK, so it's starting to do things. OK, that's better. That looks better. See, I could have come in and just had it running on container D, and then you wouldn't, be you, you wouldn't believe me. But all right. OK, let's actually look at some more slides while we wait for that to come back up. <laughs> so uh, a little bit about running a container. Oop, I don't want to share it. Whoops. No, 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 no. All right, so a little bit about running a container in Containerd. Uh, so this is, this is a general architecture of Containerd's runtime system. And when, when I was talking about a la carte earlier, um, so in the, uh, so, so when, we, when we want, so Earlier, I talked about getting mounts out of the actual um, snap uh, out of the pull system, and I also talked about getting config out of that. And uh, these both both of these are what's needed to do uh, the actual runtime. And so on the bottom, we have our containers metadata service where you actually register the, the runtime config with, and then when you get all those mounts at when you start up, you hand those into the task service, and then the, and then that will all be directly passed through into the runtime. And then so here we get, we have an example of different kinds of runtimes that could be in use. We have like Linux, there's Windows containers that can be used um, on Windows, and then uh, as well as Kata containers. And I didn't update the, the slide for GVisor, but I guess you could use GVisor now too. GVisor. Uh, so this is very similar to the flow before. Um, and so uh, on the bottom, we have the services that are going to interact with, with, with starting a container. We have the image service, the snapshot service, and the container service, and the task service. And our, we have the whole run flow. So this would be the equivalent of Docker run, but this is CTR run. Uh, we start out and we initialize a snapshot. So we, we pull off a snapshot. So I showed you the tree command. Um, and then we set, uh, set that up by creating a container, like a run, a run C config inside of the container service. And then we can start that. And then you know, out the other side, we get running containers, because that's the whole goal, right? Back to the demo. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, so this, so like 10 minutes ago, this work, this took like 20 seconds. And you know, I, it, don't, don't switch this in production yet. But <laughs> So we should see, so, th so this is starting to come up. Oh, are these backing off at all? Um, 
See that curl? No, that's not working. Okay. So, it, uh, but okay. So what? Uh, it should be. Um, so before, remember, I showed you that the namespaces were empty. So we're actually going to see. We're going to start seeing uh, namespaces. So we have the default namespace, and that's where I ran the containers before. So if I just do um, CTR uh, container ls, right? We get that. But I can change the namespace to Kubernetes. So like. Uh, so this lets you like logically separate everything. So I can run Kubernetes, I can run Docker, I can run build kit, I can uh, and Docker will actually run its system containers inside of inside of this and they'll they'll all be separated logically so so they can run on the same host without uh, interfering with each other. And so we, so when we do when we do uh, the container ls command with the Kubernetes namespace, you can actually see uh, you can see the all all the different containers here. So we can see like a bunch of pause containers that hold open uh, the namespace, and we can see like kube proxy. Uh, we can see uh, the nginx application running. Uh, we can see Calico, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so we can actually um, the the cool thing about Containerd is like it's completely debuggable uh, from a container perspective end to end. So I can take one of these uh, container IDs and I can I can get the same info on it like I showed you before. And so before I showed you the run C spec, but now I'm going to show you uh, how to get the container metadata from the uh, the actual um, the actual container it's uh, or sorry the pod manifest so this is actually stored directly in container D um, and and you can get to it and you can uh, you know pull it apart in various different ways so we this is called an extension and um, it's stored under a key that is unique to the CRI implementation so if I had something else another uh, plug-in another thing that I wanted to store on there. I can uh, you can store all these different things on containers. They're a little bit like labels, but uh, they're they're designed so that you can store like larger larger pieces of data. Let's see here. Thank you. Whoops. And then to base sixty four decode that. And then we'll you know make that nice through JQ. And you can see here this is a like pod manifest uh, for that thing. So now we can we can actually so I'm going to show you in crycuddle, and hopefully this works. I can do an inspect on the pod ID that'll work. Inspect p. Oh yeah, for pod. Up. And crycuddle not found. Mm, let me find it for you. All right. Well, that's not working either. Okay. So, uh, but but hopefully all of our pods are coming. Oh my God! All our pods are up. And guess what? So because the way uh, Cube ADM sets up the etcd deployment inside of um, in, inside of the uh, uh, it's it's I think it's in it's just like a manifest inside of Etsy Kubernetes. It actually uses a mounted volume so that when you switch runtimes and anything that's like defined outside the runtime, not using uh, that's actually inside of the kubelet or in, that's uh, uh, not implemented inside of the CRI will get transferred over. So uh, notice that like my nginx deployment is working, right? And I didn't have to do any changes. So this is uh, so you can you can actually upgrade nodes. You can change them to container D, and uh, your applications will still still work. Obviously, test it heavily if you do that. So all right. So um, uh, from there, how much time? How much time do we have? We have about ten minutes. Um, do we want to? Uh, so I can show you some more code, or we can take time for questions. What? Any? Does there? Are there any questions at this point? No. Okay. Let's see code. Okay. So the the code. So Container D has what's called this like it's a it's it's a it's a it's a client library that does a lot for you. And what that means is that you can you can change what the code does. We don't do like plugins uh, where you have like hooks that that run at various points. We j what we did is said everything that could. Uh, people would might want to change the behavior of will actually be done in the client code. So uh, this this first example is is how you do a, a pulling an image, and all you have to do is import the client, connect it to the socket, and then uh, define your namespace, and then uh, call pull, and this will actually just pull the image. And you can see here on the left of this slide, uh, we can see that uh, we set the namespace, we do a CTR pull, and then we can actually see what the what the images are. Um, and then uh, here's an example of running a container. It's it's very similar. Uh, we, we use the same client. 
we declare a new container. We're going to call it Redis server, uh, and, we, and we define uh, exact the image that we pulled uh, in the previous slide. And we actually say we specify how the specification is created. So I can I can make my own combinators that that add maybe my own set comp filters or add special environment variables that you need. Um, and then we actually can define uh, how to get that that image config out. So if I have a completely different image format that you know that's newly newly conceived, I can uh, I can define how that actually gets converted into a Run C specification, uh, or a specification for whatever runtime you want. So then, um, once we've created the container object, uh, we then uh, create a task for that container, um, and then uh, and and that'll start up. And then we so then we we specify a wait, uh, and then once we're waiting on once we have a wait on that task, we start it up, and uh, that will actually run the container. Um, so once you once you're actually running the container, so this is an example of killing the task, um, and it'll show a little bit about more more about the wait and exit. But you can see we wait, uh, and then we can call a kill on that, and then uh, then you can wait on this channel to get the status, and then you can uh, respond with the status. And I have this as an example here um, that we can just run, and it will work directly. So so just just like this is very similar to what we had before. Uh, so like we're connecting to the socket. Um, we pull in uh, example namespace. We pull Redis Alpine. Uh, we have this option to unpack it into a snapshot. You don't, you don't, that's not required. You can, you can not unpack it into a snapshot because maybe you want to add your own layers in between containers or, or do something completely different. Um, we define a new container. Um, and uh, then we, we, can, we, we have a, a few same thing on the slides before, except I think we pull in a, a new snapshot on top of that. Um, and then we'll create a task, uh, just like the slides. And we will wait and then kill that task. And um, what this, so running this, so I can see it in here. And then and we can actually do this. We'll go build. And we can, we can run this example. And it needs to be run as sudo uh, because it passes off some FIFOs into containerd. And we can see here this, so this is I think this is pulling the image right now, and then it should uh, run Redis. So what's 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 happening right now? We should be able to use. Um, so we should see a new namespace for the example, right? So we see that, and we can see that there should be a new container in there, in that namespace. Oh, maybe it's just like hanging on the Wi-Fi. <laughs> the image should show up. Yeah, it's 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 uh it's pulled the image. Oh, there it goes. Redis. Okay, so yeah, so it pulled the image. Redis started up. It hit some logs, and then we waited like three seconds, and then we killed it, and uh it uh. It exited with an exit status of zero, so it's, it's very, very easy to build. Very small lines of code. That's that kind of code is the is the code that you would see in Docker or uh, in in CRI. Uh, so the so the, the you can actually compose this with the other other things. Um, I'll make these slides available, but here's an example that would run HTOP. So you could add this at, um, add this to your run C spec and it will run HTOP inside of that same container and you can just you can you can build these there's there's things you can do with networking you can do uh, things with file systems mounts TTYs etc uh, so with that so are there any questions at this point uh, it's kind of been like I wanted to get in a lot of demo and, and stuff like that and I know it's been a bit of a frantic talk but is there because seriously there's time for questions no all right oh yeah go ahead No, no. This there's no. The only thing I did in Docker was remove all the containers from it and then run them on Containerd. This is completely without. I mean, uh, let me see if I can show you. So, so here's Docker. Docker was, is running nothing, right? And ps a, and then we can actually so, show like ps tree. Maybe that might that might be a good way to show it. Um, so here we see GNOME terminal and we see sudo Containerd, which is running on this terminal right here. And then um, you can see all the con uh, all the container shims. So we can see Cube API server, scheduler, et cetera. There's no Docker running here. 
Any other questions? I'm sorry, what? What about it? Well, so, so the HTOP is just an example thing. So, so if, if you want metrics, we actually have a Prometheus endpoint, and you can just curl that. Um, and so uh, let's see here, V1 metrics. And you can just pull these into um, Prometheus. And we have all sorts of contain. Uh, oops. oops. So like, uh, so, so here's, uh, you can go through and get the gRPC metrics, uh, but every single, um, uh, so, but you can get all the metrics for like your containers, uh, like uh, CPU usage. Uh, you can get the uh, the memory usage, like block I/O usage, any like network usage, disk usage, that kind of stuff through Prometheus. The HTOP example is just a combinator. It's not how you'd normally get metrics for a container. It, No, 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 no. So this, the, the HTOP example has nothing to do with getting metrics in a production system normally. It's just an example how, of how you can do something like silly or non-standard by just adding it into your code uh, and, and, and using that. If you want, if you want metrics, you, get, you can get them through Prometheus with Containerd. All right. Any other questions? Yes. I, I forgot that. Sorry. Uh, no, I, I, I ch modded the socket. So yeah, here's the here's the cry cuddle pods that you can see. Yeah, there we go. Inspect P. Yeah, so this is actually this is the same pod manifest that was sitting in container D before, right? Yeah, so, oh, okay, thank you. All right, is, any other questions? So, so you, so like if, if you just want like a really simple container API and that works for you, Docker is great. Um, container D is really built for when uh, the, the like 20% use case where you need something special like uh, you, you need special mounts that happen at certain times or uh, you want to integrate with some like wildly different networking system uh, or just something you can't do with Docker and isn't going to get added to Docker. It's absolutely for production systems. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If you need special, it, so so if you're if you're if you're going it, if you're running Kubernetes, like Containerd is a great choice. And if you just need a simple runtime with the CRI support, or if you need something, if you want to do something really custom with containers, like build an operating system or build some other sort of uh, like a con <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh, or 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 that kind of thing. Whereas, like, uh, if if Docker's model of containers doesn't work for you for some reason, like you can go to Containerd and customize it and make it make it work with with. You can still use Docker images with it, and uh, and then and then you know modify how that works in some way. Let's say every single Docker image you wanted to add a file at slash hello and root. Like you could do that with Containerd, but that'd be very hard to do with Docker. Yeah. Yeah. So like the same so like so so for example, so you have CRI, which is the Kubernetes container runtime interface, and then you have Docker, right? And those are both at this kind of the same level of of, of abstraction, but they think about containers differently. But container D is able to fit into both of those models. Does that make sense? Because it's flexible enough, it doesn't make its own abstractions that get in the way of Kubernetes or Docker or or BuildKit or or any large list of different systems. Uh, 
I mean, it's it's not meant to be a replacement for Docker in that sense. So, but if I, I suspect that, it, so but if you're if you're doing host mounts, if you're doing if you're running things with, uh, I mean, for the most part, if you're just using Do Docker in your development workflow, continue using Docker. It's it's a it like we're not we're not going to try to compete with Docker. That would be a silly waste of engineering. But um, yeah, you need to know. Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, in the future we might have uh, there, there, there might be some some asks for a more uh, a, a more user friendly command line client. Just, just the thing, the thing is, like Containerd has such a wide surface area that exposing all of that in a command line client would take away from its capability over time. Any other questions? All right. How much time? Do, yeah, okay. All right. All right. Thanks for coming. <laughs>